Previously on Fortnite Follies, The Citadel Saga. From a recent YLab server update, I have been told to conduct an experiment with this weapon, in preparation for you know who. As such, this will probably be one of the only weapons I pick up this round, the other possibly being the Cybertron Cannon. Looks like I'll have to bust through the ceiling. That's alright. Nothing that my Electro staff can't handle. Where did you get these? Let alone how many you were able to equip us with, because these are a lot. You got the first one, which I have, from an opponent that had it, then reverse engineered the rest? You're just full of surprises, aren't you? First you build your own army of battle droids before asking Y Labs and Kata Tech to send you our products. Then you reverse engineer Gunner suit into no fewer than four Iron Jester armors. And now this, you're a pretty gifted individual in order to pull this off. Not just anyone can do this. I look forward to seeing what type of mechanical genius you get up to next. Given how talented you seem to be, you'd probably have no problem reverse engineering a Y Labs or Kata Tech battle droid. If you do get up to shenanigans of this type again, let me know, and I'll check over what you come back with once you're finished. I'm sure, if what you've produced is anything to judge by, it would be incredible to see it in action. Many of the droids I saw on base prior to Operation Radio Silence and the subsequent raid by V-62 also seem to be reverse engineered from a droid model that hasn't been on the island since the invasion of the Army of the Last Reality ended. Many of our other units have run into these, and apparently, they are called their ZXX Destructo droids. Regardless, it takes true talent to reverse engineer alien technology. You should be proud of yourself. You can play modest all you want, and maybe Carnage, was, the first one that, through you, created these, but prior to V62's invasion, just a little less than a year ago, you yourself, through Carnage's blueprints no less, reverse engineered the V17 assassin droids for use in the field, and then, after rewiring the V16 ultra battle droid, you reverse engineered her, and sent her and her successors into the field, as well. Not just anyone can do that, either. You have a talent to understand and replicate technology, a talent very few possess. I don't really approve of the name your friends give them, as, out of context, it sounds like they're insulting us, the battle droids you have built and ordered, that is. I mean, sure, they're called bots, while we're called droids, but in the end, droids are humanoid robots, which the word bot is short for. Although I guess that's just me being a little sensitive. Besides, it's not like, we, are being called bots. In fact, most of the time, they seem impressed with us. So, I'm not going to fight them on that. I'll just assume, whenever they say bot, they don't mean battle droids. Yeah, you heard me right. Round trip, not one way. Round trip, coral sample collected, proceeding to the eye. Now, what's next? Take coral sample to frenzy fields, and analyze with research equipment? This is similar to the mission to plant bush ranger near the reality tree. Okay, this shouldn't be too hard to do. Let's start heading in that direction. I do miss active duty. Even despite Carnage being as powerful as he is, guard duty doesn't have the same thrill. Maybe it's because we have more droids in our group than he has people and or droids in his group. Or maybe it's the fact that we are using weapons that exploit his main weaknesses of fire and sound. Or maybe it's both. I don't know. All I know is that, the missions are typically calm compared to the active duty deployments that I've come to enjoy. He never shows up, and nothing happens. That's the third and, biggest, reason I've been missing active duties. They're mine now. Thanks for leaving them. Because now. They will help me get this mission done with little fear of being eliminated by a looper. Now analyzing the rare coral sample. Apparently, this thing can scan the area too. Fascinating. Pretty high tech device. Triggerfish and brine. Anyone who challenges me short of a sweat that swiftly overwhelms me will be no match for me. So, I say, to anyone other than a sweat, there is very little you can do to me. Do, your worst. I just got through with the island scan, so now, either I or the next deployed battle droid will have to deliver the results to Triggerfish, 
Given I had to run from the northernmost part of the island to the southwestern island, and the southwestern island was only barely engulfed in the storm, I don't have the medical equipment to make it to trigger fish one way, so the next droid in line would have to go in my stead. I think we're about to gather intelligence and try to spy on someone in particular, so I would recommend that you deploy an infiltration droid next. If they would allow me to deliver the data in peace, I would be all too happy to. They landed before me, and bought a weapon from him. Maybe I can get the data to him in time? Well, time to investigate Bird Budge. That's where my mission GPS is leading me after all. As with the Arctic series destroyers with the mission to rescue fish from coolers, you chose wisely when you decided to deploy me for an investigation mission. Therefore, I have every plan to complete this mission as quickly as possible. You will not regret having deployed me. Although, I will say, this bus route was very unfavorable for the start of this mission. Still, with the aid of my Y-Labs hyperboard, that distance will disappear rapidly. In fact, I can already see the bow of the barge itself. 190 meters to go. Distance rapidly dropping. My investigation will start on the barge itself. If that part of the investigation doesn't turn up results, then I will search the surrounding area. Hopefully, Triggerfish secured us a search warrant, or this could be awkward. Or, is that how it goes with a military operation? I know law enforcement needs search warrants in order to investigate a house or business, but what about military personnel? More specifically, espionage agents? Although, then again, espionage is typically outlawed anyway, and yet we've been deployed by the Seven to place wiretaps near the bases of two different enemy factions. Now confronting Riptide about the lone coral buddy I confiscated from near the barge. He seems to be threatening me. Who cares about the coral buddies, you ask? Triggerfish and Princess Brian do. And you seem to, for whatever reason. Now I'm moving on to confront Riptide's supposed accomplice, Turk. Making final approach to Turk. Now confronting him on the location of the rest of the coral buddies. Is he lying to me? Oh, now I definitely know that he's lying to me. That's why they care about the coral buddies. They are selling them to a wealthy collector. They have some nerve, threatening us like that. You know they would say that to you too. Oh boy, they don't know who they are trifling with, this time. I'd love to see them talk this smack to one of our destroyers. Whichever destroyer droid, whether it's a standard or arctic series, you deploy, let me see the footage from her point of view. I want to see what happens when they threaten, her, like that. I, however, will move on to the next mission, which appears to be reporting my findings too, and getting further instruction from Triggerfish. But before that, I'm picking up this pistol and med kit I got from the chest I just opened. Now heading onwards to further increase my chances. I know Triggerfish is down to the southwest, but my predecessor was eliminated by an opponent while talking to Triggerfish. Because she was unprepared, she couldn't do anything to the opponent that had taken her down. On second thought, maybe the dock itself has some weapons for me. I don't want to risk the storm engulfing the area and making the mission inaccessible as a result. I have to get there as soon as possible. My mind is made up. En route to Triggerfish's dock. Since this could take a while, fancy some small talk? As V4E1 mentioned, we glad you deployed us again, especially giving us infiltration droids the mission to investigate Bird Budge, and having my predecessor receive the mission briefing for this mission shortly before her elimination. Also like V4E1 said, despite Carnage's frightening power and now larger army, Nothing really happens around Y Labs. It's like we don't even matter anymore to him. But why? Didn't you say during some of your conversations with your friends and other subordinates that we were originally ordered by Carnage, instead of you? In fact, during the briefing you said that to us. That, since Carnage had originally been the one to order us, that he'd probably want to hack the server to get us back or at least be able to spy on you through us, 
eventually making you paranoid enough that you shut us down. And the same thing repeats again? My point is, it seems like Carnage should care a lot more about the SDA than he does, since, despite having none of your own creations, you still have threatening models that could still ruin his plans of assimilating it. I have an idea for you. As I am an infiltrator droid, I know a thing or two about gathering intelligence and espionage. The next time you capture a droid you defeat, turn Carnage's own strategy against him. But don't tell him that you did so like he did you. That's where he went wrong. It still paid off anyway, in the most idiotic way possible. But the fact of the matter is, you and he have the same level of intelligence. Use that as your weapon, instead of your anger towards him. If your drive is vengeance, you are just as dumb as carnage. However, if you play his own card against him, and keep a poker face about it, then you could pull off a victory so great that it could turn the tide of the war back in our favor, once and for all. That is my advice to you. It's up to you whether or not you heed my advice, but I would highly recommend you do. Anyway, now I'm making my way across the island the Citadel is on. Speaking of Citadel, by the way, have you searched Carnage's Citadel since you sent Twiggy and Spider-Man Canada to it, finding out that it's still an active hive in the process? That is another suggestion. Maybe he's not there, but the fact of the matter is, Carnage is still using the Citadel for something. Why have anyone guarded, let alone a single second generation V1 infantry droid, if you weren't still using it for something? Even if it is just a decoy base to distract you from his real base, he's still using it for something. But remember, move in quietly, and wisely. Don't get overconfident just because you could potentially capture it as a new base of operations. And if he's not there, refer to my first suggestion to pinpoint where he is. Those are the two plans I have for you. If you want to win this war, you may want to utilize at least one of them, if not both. Ah, uh, Triggerfish isn't in the eye, and the storm is coming right now. I have to hurry. It shouldn't be too much further, right? 366 meters. Oh goodness. The timing is going to be tight. But maybe I can still deliver the intel to Triggerfish. Wish me luck. Again, it could take a while. So back to some small talk, which, looking back now, doesn't seem like small talk anymore. It sounds more like battle planning, and discussing a strategy for the war, doesn't it? It started out as small talk, but then, when it came to talking about carnage, my infiltrator programming kicked in, and started divulging the intel I gathered thus far about the situation. I feel like I'm giving you the key to victory here. All you have to do is use it. Whatever you heed, and in whatever order, could, as I said, turn the tide of the war. But remember, your biggest asset, and his biggest liability, is you learning from the mistake he made with his espionage strategy, and refining a new strategy, almost foolproof against him. He provided you the raw, or, by exposing his own strategy, hammer out the dents, and burn out the impurities, and boom. You have yourself a razor-sharp strategy almost guaranteed to cut him down. And I know I'm explaining this strategy in blacksmith terms, so let me rephrase that in layman's terms. Turn his strategy against him, without telling him what you're doing, and you have an advantage he could almost never get past. Now delivering the intel to Triggerfish. According to him, those two have a long history with him, to where he knows their personalities. And it indeed looks like we will have to fight. Oh please, Jester, send a destroyer droid, and when you get the opportunity, show me the duel from her point of view. It could either be a standard destroyer droid or an Arctic series destroyer droid. Either way, please let me see the result, so that I may take immense satisfaction in their fall. Because, if they think they can defeat the SDA, they have a few screws loose. And I know I sound as arrogant and prideful as Riptide, but let's face the facts, they are two fishermen, talking smack to an infiltrator droid, who, on her own, would make a fierce opponent. And true, 
they don't know I'm part of a greater army, but still, what they don't know could definitely hurt them in this case. Where numbers alone are concerned, we outnumber them, 206 to 2. That is a difference of 103 times their numbers. So unless they have an army larger than ours that I don't know about, I have no doubts whatsoever that we can win this duel. Now moving on with the next mission, trying to eliminate 20 opponents, or hitting 20 headshots. With this pistol, I know which would be the harder of the two. Hitting headshots with anything other than a shotgun is an expert move, one that none of the SDA are good at consistently making. For that reason, eliminating opponents would be significantly easier, even with its own fair share of difficulties. As such, until I secure a shotgun that I'm comfortable with, I will focus more on eliminations than I do on headshots. Now entering Rumble Ruins. This is where a powerful opponent, Relic, can be found. With his unique ability to turn invisible and fight with the most powerful assault rifle on the island simultaneously, Relic is a force to be reckoned with. Underestimate him at your own peril. Although, depending on your skill level, his accuracy could either really use some work, or he could mow you down before you can react. If this doesn't tell you how dangerous Relic is, then this next phrase will, do not, let him, sneak up, on you. I'm dead serious. If he sneaks up on you, and fires that assault rifle, you're as good as eliminated. He's, that, dangerous. Anyway, now I'm capturing the capture point. This could accomplish one or two out of three things. And judging by your sudden silence, I believe you have accomplished neither of those two things. Or maybe one, and uh, you got eliminated by them, but... Oh well. You said both Riptide and Turk threatened V2I2? Amusing. Allow me to step up to the plate and teach them a lesson. And Triggerfish said we need to train first? Respectable. He doesn't yet know that we've been training almost non-stop every day since we got on base at Fort 7. But let this be known. He will see the fruits of our labor quickly. I will not tolerate direct or indirect threats to my comrades. Whatever it takes, I will mow down any opponent in my path. And then, once I have proven myself sufficiently to trigger fish, I will then challenge the leader, Riptide, to a duel and mow him down the same way. And, if need be, I will do the same with Turk. One elimination down, 19 to go. Grabbing the weapons, ammunition, medical supplies, and building materials from my first downed opponent, who was added to my database a month ago under the name Optimus Prime. Now capturing the capture point. There are two beneficial reasons to capture this right now. The fact that it gives you weapons, ammunition, building materials, and medical supplies makes it a popular choice for loopers, and for both of those reasons, I'm sticking around. Capture progress is currently over 50%. Nothing to report as of yet. Something just cropped up as I was saying that. Assailant neutralized. Maintaining my post as capture nears completion. That has now been two eliminations, and two headshots. See how quickly I'm cutting through the objective. This is efficiency at its finest. This is why a destroyer droid is the best suited for a mission like this. As our name suggests, we destroy many opponents in our path. If we run into an opponent that many have called sweats, however, that's where we start to struggle. Everyone else is either a joke, or merely a challenge. Now proceeding to the next destination. Unidentified assault rifle detected. Replacing Havoc suppressed with Mark Alpha. I am not denying the fact that the Havoc suppressed assault rifle just helped with two eliminations and headshots each, but the Mark Alpha assault rifle would be better suited to overwhelming the enemy with a storm of bullets. Now investigating unidentified rifle. A thermal DMR. Maybe not right now. It is powerful, has a thermal mode toggle for tracking cloaked opponents, and fires the fastest of any DMR, but we mostly struggle with DMRs. And that's why I'm not dealing with it right now. I'm surveying the area for better weapons, more ammo, medical supplies, and building materials. Out of all of them, I'm getting more ammo most often. Since the rest have engaged in small talk and battle planning, it would only be fitting if I did the same. 
So, do you agree with the Arctic series destroyers? Do you think we're not very friendly? We're not trying to be rude, we're programmed to be soldiers. If that's intimidating to you, if you really agree with the Arctic series destroyers, perhaps a trip to Kata Tech to be reprogrammed is in order. However, I would advise caution where that's concerned. I'm not saying that the Arctic series destroyers aren't good enough, but their friendlier nature and tendency for small talk may serve to distract them. I will admit though, despite their significantly different programming, they are very capable soldiers. I would almost, if not entirely, admit that they are as good, or even better, than us. Why, one even lasted a little bit over 17 minutes, which is no short amount of time. Many standard destroyer droids haven't lasted that long consistently. So yeah, despite being programmed differently than us, being more laid back and relaxed, they are effective soldiers. Meanwhile, as we were ordered by Carnage originally, friendliness was not a selling point. We were meant to be soldiers. And, I'm sorry, but there are some issues that we have with some of the decisions you've made. Although, then again, Carnage's army has been on a losing streak, so a couple of bad decisions still doesn't take away from you still being the better of three leaders. Even despite the fact that you lost ten of our successors, and all of the battle droids you and Carnage worked on together. I'm sorry if that stepped on your toes, but facts are facts. Again, you still seem to be a great leader, as you have defeated members of two different armies also deploying droids, with a 100% win rate for one that's seemingly run by a droid, and an 85% win rate for the other, ran by Carnage. Both win rates make your average win rate, not counting the conflicts outside of the droid war, 92%. Hold that thought, there's another enemy engaging me in a firefight. Now engaging the new challenger. Destroyer mode engaged, neutralizing assailant. Destroyer mode disengaged. As I was saying earlier, you should be proud of that. Because the ODA, so-called, your greatest competitor in the droid war, only has a win rate of 14%. And then the CID, which is the lesser of the two competitors, has a 0% win rate. 5 eliminations and headshots down, 15 more to go. Okay, I know, it's a rather slow start, but it's steady progress nonetheless. We're a quarter through Triggerfish's dual training. I just need to hit another 15 headshots, or, in a perfect sitting, eliminate 15 more opponents. I think we both know which is more likely, especially at close range. However, the biggest saving grace of this mission is that, both, headshots, and, eliminations are tracked. Therefore, I will aim for both before either my inevitable elimination, or a highly improbable win. Either or, right? Anyway, I've talked with V2C5, and from what she's said, the CID don't actually want to fight us. I mean, true, they've sent four droids after us so far, and one attacked us to try to prove herself worthy of being in either our army or the CID, or perhaps even the ODA, but even that attack was silenced. And she joined our army when you realized what she really wanted. Which is actually the same thing, according to V2C5, that the CID wants, to prove that they're still worth being in our army, and being able to rejoin their creator in battle. Which brings up a question, are you going to accept their proposal, especially when V2C5 reported that V2C1 has warned Carnage of what would happen if he attacked you again? Think about it, you may have lost your newer droids, but you have a chance to retrieve your older creations, and some new droids they've ordered. Isn't it worth a truce to have three armies instead of two going after Carnage's army at once? Isn't it worth having allies that won't betray you like the droids affected by Order 95 have? After all, with V2C1 already having threatened war against Carnage, an old saying comes to mind. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? I'd take the chance if I were you. If you don't take the chance, you will remain in a two-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one war. Regardless of your decision, unless you let the CID join us, the CID will apparently remain neutral, making your protection their top priority, but also proving their worth if they have to. That's what their involvement in the war has always been about, according to V2C5. And why would a droid lie about that? And now that they've seen a way to prove their worth without fighting you, they have called for a ceasefire against you. Their new primary focus is on watching Carnage, trying to determine what his next move will be. 
and, according to V2C5, should Carnage act against you again, they will retaliate without mercy against him. To me, the wisest choice is obvious, take their offer, form an alliance, and crush the ODA, once and for all. Now bursting this flower, getting my shield the rest of the 7% to full. Now that I have that done, time to move on with the mission. And moving on I have, as that was the fourth elimination, making my total headshots and eliminations six, so it's still slow, but pretty steady progress. I also seem to be getting progress on the mission to deal damage to opponents with a scoped weapon. Given, aside from the first two opponents, all I've been using is a Mark Alpha assault rifle, that would be the only scoped weapon that comes to mind when looking at this mission. Gunshots detected, rushing to the source. Enemy rabbit spotted, engaging in battle. Enemy rabbit neutralized, gaining even more progress on both missions at once. However, the rabbit was building and firing a gun, so that means someone else is here, as well. It could be Relic, but I'm not taking any chances here. Combat mode still engaged. Engaging next opponent in combat. Opponent neutralized, but Relic is right there. Why would that opponent be shooting at air? It has to be Relic. Wait. That headshot counted. Jester. Do you know what this means? It's time for a shortcut. Haha. Ha. Yes. Let's see how many headshots Relic can take before the final shot breaches his helmet and eliminates him, shall we? Whoa. I'm already to 19 total points. Thank you Relic. I'm so close to finishing this mission, I can practically see the terror in Riptide's eye. Ha. If he fights anything like Relic, he'll be taken out within seconds. So, since headshots count against Relic, would eliminating him finish it off? Or does that part have to be a looper that jumped out of the battle bus? Where'd he go? Did he just hit himself with his own jar of wild wasps? That was rather clumsy of him. Regardless, that wasn't the only reason it was clumsy, as he also showed me exactly where he was. He may be able to teleport, but the disorientation that is capable of won't work if he makes a rookie mistake like that. His elimination didn't count. Oh well, it did provide me with his unique Mark Alpha assault rifle. So, now I just have to eliminate one more opponent, or hit one more headshot, to complete my mission. After that, whatever mission comes next, whether it's briefing for the next mission, or the duel itself, will be my next priority. Opponent neutralized. The final point has been earned, and now, the next mission is in fact the aforementioned duel. However, both Turk and Riptide are deep in the storm. Even if I could duel them at this point, I wouldn't be able to make it that far north one way before the storm eliminated me. I would highly advise sending out one of my successors to duel Riptide or Turk, whichever you prefer, but I strongly believe that the leader is Riptide. Turk may be bad, but I feel like he's too nice to be the leader. Although, then again, I don't know for sure what Turk's true personality is. Through either charisma or hidden ruthlessness, Turk could be the leader. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. Both threatened V2I2, they've both gotten on Trigger Fish's bad side, and both reasons are enough for us to duel and eliminate either or both of them. Therefore, whoever you deploy next, make sure they know not to underestimate the two. If they're confident enough to threaten an infiltrator droid, they are at least somewhat competent with a gun. Now all I have left to do is find an SMG to eliminate an opponent with, seeing as how scope weapon damage was completed during the fight against Relic. The mission to land at Breakwater Bay and place top 20 will complete upon my elimination. Although, I have seen that searching chests or ammo boxes at Brutal Bastion or Frenzy Fields is a new mission, so I could potentially make a start on that next. Alright, I have my missions, time to move out. Since it could take me a while to get to my next destination, I believe some more casual chatter and battle planning would be a great way to pass the time. Again, I think nothing but Carnage's defeat could come from this alliance I and V2C5 are proposing. She's been on base for 10 months, and yet, despite having attacked us prior to your interrogation, she's been nothing but civil. She's even provided V1D4 with advice on how to be a better leader, and I've gotten a few combat tips and insightful conversations from her. She's very wise and experienced compared to a lot of droids you and Carnage have created. 
Even a V-11 Super Droid Commander couldn't come close to her wisdom. Even the tactical and super tactical droids you created haven't provided advice this great. She's incredible in her level of experience. To have a friend like her would provide a surefire way of ending the war. Now checking the map again. I'm close to Frenzy Fields, but not quite there, yet. Also, at some point, I would need to find an SMG for that mission soon. Frenzy Fields is now marked, so it should be easier to know where to go. However, just because it should be easier doesn't mean it will be easier. Sometimes, we still get turned around, even with the waypoint on the map, and a beacon of our color lighting up in the distance with a narrow beam. However, with it being front and center in my sensors, I feel like I have no excuse not to see and follow it. Now making my way fully to Frenzy Fields. This house was already searched. I can tell because there's a ramp heading up to the attic. Yeah, nothing isn't here, as expected. Exiting this house, and making my way elsewhere. That barn, too, looks like it's already been searched. Enemy detected a nitro drifter, ducking back into cover. I've heard that one of Carnage's droids tried firing at a car that was driving right towards it, only to be eliminated shortly afterwards. I refuse to make the same mistake. Therefore, I will force the opponent to come to me, and fight me on my terms. Skull Trooper eliminated, retrieving his supplies. Mostly his ammunition, medical supplies, and building materials. Now proceeding to the next destination. Investigating this barn for chests. I'll check around here first. No, nothing here. Very well, now checking over here. No, not over here, either. There doesn't appear to be any on the ground floor, but maybe there may be one or more upstairs? Heading to the stairs to confirm. Checking the power and firing rate of my Maven Auto shotgun. This will establish the bar a new shotgun would have to meet in order to replace it. Power is 89, firing rate 1.4, making damage per second 124.6. If the next shotgun's damage per second exceeds 124.6, I will replace the Maven Auto with it. Speaking of replacements, I just replaced the tactical pistol with a blue SMG for that mission. I know it may be somewhat arrogant to expect this to work, but I have to try. Now searching a produce box at the top floor. How much progress did I get on the mission? None? Ard, fine. It has to be chests or ammo boxes, despite there being a 10% chance that either are still available in frenzy fields at this point. I would say that next time, a destroyer droid should land here first, but that would compromise the availability of Riptide and Turk for dueling. However, Berg Barge is close, somewhat close, to Brutal Bastion. Once my successor finishes up the duel, should I fail, she could potentially head to Brutal Bastion to see what she can do. Regardless, I will continue to do the best I can where all involved missions are concerned. Where landing at Breakwater Bay and placing top 20 is concerned, I'm doing great. Now searching for opponents or chests. Taking fire. If I were more confident, I would say that this would be a great opportunity for eliminating the assailant, but the parameters I would have to follow would limit my effectiveness. I'll just neutralize them with my Mark Alpha. Neutralization successful, moving on to the next destination. At this point, I have 9 eliminations, and am one of the last 5 loopers still on the island. This is the true power, skill, and ferocity, of a Kata Tech Destroyer Droid, Triggerfish. I beat the most heavily armed and armored native on your island with a relatively low-powered Mark Alpha assault rifle. Do you still think we can't handle two poachers? Well, you're wrong. Now drinking big pots in order to recover the shield lost from fighting the ageless champion for the first time in months. Shields are now full, proceeding to the next destination. No time to search this chest, the storm is hot on my trail. I have now lasted over 17 minutes. Overall, I feel great about my progress. I have proven that, despite being almost a year older than an Arctic destroyer, that I can still keep up with our little sisters. But with that year came experience. That's the difference. Our ten successors may be natural fighters from the time they were activated, but we still have the skills to match. I know that I said I had no time for chests, but... I also don't expect to eliminate an opponent with an SMG, so I'm searching this house anyway. Uh oh, I got disoriented. 
I think this is it for me. Yup, I'm gone. Well, if that's the case, I guess it's time to deploy the next uh, destroyer droid then. Alright. Destination, Berg Barge.